Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett, and my hands is always Matt, a tribute to Matthew Shepard. Uh, it is by Leslie Newman, forward by Jason Collins, illustrated by Brian Brittigan. Uh, I'll admit, when I first got this, for some reason I was thinking it was a graphic novel about Matthew Shepard and what happened to him. Uh, but it's not. It is more kind of like a poetry book, uh, written more like a poetry book, with absolutely stunning, beautiful art to remind us uh, about Matthew Shepard and why he's so important. Uh, for those who don't know, we're coming up about 25 years, not coming up, it's been about 25 years uh, since Matthew Shepard was murdered um, for being gay. Uh, he was lured by two individuals who beat him and left him for dead. Uh, he uh, was found and many days later died. Um, it created shock across the nation and um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those bellwether moments, one of those really important moments in the LGBTQ movement, um, shocking on so many levels. Um, and I remember it. I mean, Shepard was maybe a couple years older than me. Uh, and so we would have been contemporaries and, um, you know, I remember hitting the news and, and, and being utterly disgusted at, at what happened. Um, the book itself is, is gorgeous. Uh, the... What Newman puts out is, I think, absolutely fantastic. Um, there's a really interesting opening about uh, from Jason Collins, who was the first, I believe the first, he says, I believe he said the first, um, NBA player to come out uh, as LBGT. And he talks about his experience uh, and Shepard's impact on him. At least the news about Matthew Shepard's impact on him. Uh, but really, it's I think it's... it's the story about Matthew and then Newman's follow-up, that her epilogue that I think really stands out. She doesn't just talk about his life, but also her experiences afterwards. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute, but I want to sh show off the art first. Um, I do want to say, like, the... I was borderline crying reading this multiple times um it's it's a rough read it takes us back to a horrible time in our nation and it gets you to reflect of in question of whether or not we're better or worse or have taken steps back um you see that i think the art is is absolutely gorgeous there's i think one more yeah this is one i want to want to show off um but it's, it's interesting of, of Newman's epilogue, um, and I, I have some thoughts I wrote down, and I, I wrote down for a couple of reasons, because it's things I, I feel are really important to say, but also to keep me focused, because, as I said, like, I, I choked up. I was near tears crying at the I was crying. I'll admit it. I was crying during it. So we read this. Um, so Newman's lessons, as she writes at the end, is we need to remember the story of Matthew Shepard. Communities need to be judged by very real individuals, not myths. And her work and the stories she shares in her epilogue shows engagement can create change. Keeping Matthew's story alive helps make that change. And though the clouds roll in and it feels like the forces of hate are not just on the rise today, but they have the upper hand, we all, the LGBTQ plus community, the black, Asian, Jewish, Muslim, everyone who stands for uh, equality and equity must stand and fight for what's right. Harry Milk said, rights are won only by those who make their voices heard. Newman is doing that by sharing Matt's story and giving lectures about the LGBTQ plus experience. I often think of Milk in today's world and ask what if. Like Shepard, Harvey Milk's life ended too early and also due to hate and extremism. Milk uh, recorded statements to be played if he was assassinated. One of those was taped November 18th, 1977. And almost exactly a year later, Milk was assassinated along with San Francisco Mayor Moscone on November 27, 1978. So I want to end this by paraphrasing Milk with a mix of some of his quotes, and many of them actually stick with me today. You know, I asked for the moments to continue, or sorry, sorry, I asked for the movement to continue, for the movement to grow, because last week I got a phone call from Altoona, Pennsylvania, and my election gave somebody else, one more person, hope. And after all, that's what this is all about. It's not about personal gain, it's not about ego, not about power, it's about giving those young people out there in Altino, Pennsylvania, hope. You gotta give them hope. There's hope for a better tomorrow, without hope. Not only gays, but those blacks and Asians and disabled and seniors, the uses, the uses without hope, the uses give up. I know that you cannot live on hope alone, but without it, life is not worth living. And you, and you, and you, 
you have to give them hope. It takes no compromise to give people their rights. It takes no money to respect the individual. It takes no individual. Uh, it takes no political deal to give people freedom. It takes no survey to remove repression. And I want to wrap up by saying, hate marches on. Hate comes with a smile and can start small with things like book bans and drag show bans. But hate grows and festers and creates a world where there will be many more Matthew Shepherds whose lives will be cut short and their chance to foster and build a more welcoming world is stolen from us all. Always Matt is a reminder as to what happened, the hate that exists, the hate that unfortunately is out there. Um, it's a beautiful book. I highly recommend it. Go hit up your shop. Go purchase it. Thanks so much. Keep reading those comics. Don't give up hope.